Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now, I don't think it's any great secret that I'm a rather large Audi fan, but actually the thing I love most about Audi is Quattro four-wheel drive. I've actually owned four Quattro Audis, and my Quattro journey started in 2000 when I bought my first, which was a Mark 1 225 brake horsepower TT Roadster. But Audi's Quattro journey started with this car. The Audi Quattro Coupe. Now, believe it or not, this year we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Quattro. It was first seen at the Geneva Motor Show in 1980. And that makes me feel very, very old. And I've got this car for a few days, thanks to the very generous people at Audi UK press team. They reached out to me and said, look, you're a Quattro lover. It's the 40th anniversary. Would you like one of the cars from our heritage collection? And we arranged for me to have this. And it's just a beautiful car. I cannot wait to share it with you. I honestly still think it looks box fresh today. It's in incredible condition but I could literally walk around and talk about the outside of this car all day long. But my favorite view actually is come, come over this way. Come and have a look at this. That view, I think that's one of the most iconic views of any car from its era. It's just a stunning looking thing. Aggressive angular lines, the slightly flared arches. I love the spoiler. Now what you won't be able to get on camera is it's Typical 80s, a lot of the spoilers we use in the 80s are like kind of squidgy soft touch and you can actually put your fingers into that. It's got a real proper exhaust look. Everything about this car just oozes class and character. But we owe so much to this car, both in terms of road cars, but especially in terms of motorsport, in particular rallying. This car, this name, Quattro, changed rallying forever. The day this car started rallying, rallying changed and then obviously it was evolved through the years to become an absolutely iconic rally car but more about that very shortly there is so many different stories so much i want to talk to you about this car it's so exciting and the best place to start really is inside let's get in it take it for a drive and do all of my talking from behind the steering wheel because i haven't even mentioned the absolutely stunning and iconic five cylinder engine and the sound it makes it's just delicious let's go for a drive <laughs> yep this one's a left hooker this car from the heritage collection is so special it's a 1981 car but this was actually a UK delivery car before they even started to develop the right-hand drive version of the Quattro. That's how old and special this car is. Um, but the interior is so 80s. I mean, there was a Blaupunkt cassette. Can anybody, you know, there's probably members of the uh, peddlers community that's never seen a cassette before. There's a cassette player there. It's just so old school, but it is so beautiful and full of character and there's just no driver distractions in here whatsoever. Let me jump behind the driver's side, behind the steering wheel, and talk to you a bit more about that. Oh, now then, in all seriousness, overall, it's not bad. I mean, it's quite apparent when you get in these older cars that driver ergonomics have come an awfully long way in 40 years. These seats aren't great. The pedals are offset slightly. And I believe that in the right-hand drive versions, there's a, a little kind of uh, where the footwell comes in. It means that changing gear isn't quite as nice. So actually the left-hand drive ones are probably a little bit nicer to drive. Super basic cabin, although for 1981, there are some gimmicks in here I didn't expect. I have electric windows and electric door mirrors, um, five-speed manual box, which is it's, it's all right, it's not, it's not the tightest of boxes, but um, you've always got to get in these cars with a little bit of a, you know, an adjustment to your expectations. 
And then the really interesting thing, there's some fantastic kind of little logo down here. I've got manual diff locks, because this is such an early Quattro Coupe. The diff locks are still manual. There's two little levers down here by the handbrake, uh, and they became electronic in later versions. And obviously in the modern day Quattros, you don't have to worry about that at all. It's all done by the, by the system. And then the instrument binnacle is really, really basic. You've got a speedo and an odometer, a fuel gauge and a turbo boost gauge and a clock, and that's it, and some simple little uh, switches down here. Oh, it has electric seats, electrically heated seats as well, which I didn't expect, but no air con, just some sliders there and a fan. But it's super basic. Now, when I first drove this car a couple of days ago, um, it, the, the, it almost oozes history at you. It has the most fantastic patina and smell smell in a really good way. It just smells like an old historic car. The interior, these velour seats are um, interesting and it's got big deep shag pile carpet on the rear parcel shelf. Uh, the boot, you've got a little uh, lever just to the side of my seat here to open the boot and the boot inside doesn't have a great deal of space. I nearly bought one of these but not that I couldn't afford the Quattro Turbo one. I was going to buy the 2.0-litre GT um, but in the end I bought a Toyota Celica but let's not talk about that. Um, but yeah it's just incredible thing in here so I think we need to take it for a drive and talk to you about what this car is like to drive and also some of the history of the Audi Quattro. The second you get behind the wheel of this car, it's a sense of theatre and drama and nostalgia beyond most cars I've ever driven, to be fair. The obvious things you need to get used to very quickly is the fact you're sat on the wrong side of the car, for a UK driver that is. Uh, you have to be quite deliberate with the gear changes and the car does take a little bit of getting used to just in terms of things like biting point and those types of things. And then the, my biggest challenge so far is getting my head around the fact that I'm in such a precious car that's 40 years old. It's looked after so well by Audi that honestly it probably drives like it did back in 1981 but mentally I just can't get over the fact it's such an old car. And even though the red line is at 6,500 RPM and the five cylinder engine when you get it on song from kind of four and a half thousand onwards just sounds divine. I am struggling with revving it past about 5,000 RPM. I have done, but I don't, it's not the kind of car you want to drive quickly, to be honest. It's very, very much a nostalgic cruising kind of car. So as we wait for the car to warm up, let me just tell you a little bit about the iconic engine that's in the front of this car. This early Quattro had a 2,144cc 10-valve five-cylinder engine, producing 200 PS and 285 Newton meters. 0 to 60 was 7.1 seconds with a top speed of 137 miles per hour. In 1989, the engine was upgraded to 2,226cc and 20 valves, that's four valves per cylinder. That produced 220 PS or 217 horsepower and the top speed increased to 143 miles an hour. Yes, the, the five-cylinder engine became synonymous with the Quattro and it disappeared from the Audi range for quite a while and then it came back with the RS3 and the TT RS. And I remember when those two cars were launched, I was just so excited to hear that five-cylinder engine again and I've been lucky enough since then to drive quite a lot of the five-cylinder uh, RS range and they just sound magnificent such a different engine tone from anything else and that for me is the first bit of character in this car the noise the engine makes is just divine you know we do get spoiled these days I mean, this car has 200 horsepower. A Fiesta ST has 200 horsepower. And it's not really considered, in a modern car, that much power or that fast. But this car still feels quite pokey and quite quick, even when compared to a modern contemporary car. But you don't want to do that when you drive this car. What you need to do is try and get yourself in a time machine. Mentally, take yourself back 40 years and then sit behind the steering wheel of this car and drive it. 
40 years. Driving this car 40 years ago. Must have been like driving some kind of time machine. It is really quick. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quick for modern day standards. The suspension is very soft. The big high walls on the tires give it lovely ride comfort, but modern day cars are so low profile, so firmly sprung. This thing's soft and compared with the modern day car, quite lollopy really. But it's quick. But 40 years ago, this must have just been unbelievable. I, and that's the thing, when I drove this car for the first time, I had it delivered and I went out for a drive, I didn't bring the cameras with me, I just wanted to reminisce to, I, it's, this is a car I've wanted to drive for so long, for so long, it's an iconic car. And when I was, you know, in my uh, late teens, early twenties, there were still these around quite a bit and you could kind of get hold of them and, and you thought, oh, that'd be quite nice, but they were quite a lot of money and I just never thought I'd ever get to drive one. And when you drive one, it, it was such an emotional experience for me. But it, it is that that barometer of 1980s. <laughs> I mean, the whole, you know, fire up the quattro thing, I guess, made this car, gave it a new spice of life, opened it up to a brand new audience of people who probably never really, until they watched Ashes to Ashes, knew what a quattro was. This is it, people, and it's a proper, proper car. The Audi Quattro accelerates faster than Concorde. Not 60. It's capable of 135 miles an hour with or without a following wind. And because all four of the Audi's wheels are driven all the time, changing direction at speed requires rather less of a wing and prayer, even when conditions on the ground aren't exactly ideal. It's your mother on the phone, Roger. The four-wheel drive Audis. Four-sprung Durk Technik, as they say in Germany. You know, by modern standards, the brakes aren't very good either, but who cares when it sounds like that. Now then, let's go back to this word, quattro. Because nowadays, having a four-wheel drive road car isn't that unusual. Most manufacturers have a four-wheel drive option in their range somewhere. And I know there are, there are a huge swathe of people that really don't like four-wheel drive cars. They'd rather have rear-wheel drive, that's a proper driver's car, it's more driving engagement, and all of those things. I know there's a school of thought that just basically thinks that Quattro Audis understeer like a good one and aren't that engaging to drive. And I'm sorry, but I'm just not in one of those camps. I, I really like Quattro, but the Quattro journey starts with this car back in 1981 and rallying. But the man they all fear is twice former winner Hanno Mikola in the amazing turbocharged four-wheel drive Audi Quattro. The Quattro debuted in the UK in the 1981 RAC rally. So long ago, here is Jean Todd, now president of the FIA, Dave Richards, now chairman of ProDrive and Motorsport UK and ex-head of the BAR and Benetton F1 teams. The legend that was Henri Toivonen, killed in 1986 driving a Lancia Delta S4. And let's not forget Michel Mouton, winner of the Rally San Remo in 1981 in an Audi Quattro and still to this day the last female top level rally driver. The cars of that era were cool but all two wheel drive. The Quattro just blew them away. Mikola, winner of countless world-class rallies, is looking to give the Quattro its first British victory. Previously used to sideways motoring, he now opts for the straighter racing line around the corners. Michel Mouton, in the second Audi Quattro, made rallying history by winning the Italian round of the World Championship. The attractive French girl is suffering from a heavy cold. Her spirited driving soon makes her a great favourite with the crowd. She soon followed suit with four-wheel drive and the rally arms race started. Audi evolved the Quattro into Group B and the simply awesome S1. Look 
at those cars that this car was rallying against, they were all either rear wheel drive or front wheel drive. And very shortly after this hit the scene, everything went four wheel drive and the world of rallying was never the same again. And then you start to get the development in terms of road cars. And even from, you know, road cars all the way into, you know, obviously within the Audi range, you've got things like the R8, which is Quattro, but you've got the, a very similar platform in Lamborghini uh, and a number of different supercars that have that four wheel drive capability. And it all started with this, the daddy of them all, the Audi Quattro Coupe. Let's drive in a slightly more spirited manner, shall we? Little bit of turbo lag, it must be said. That's changing at like four and a half to five. I just don't, I don't want to rev it too much. I just have too much respect for this car. Into Ferrari corner, down into second, probably didn't need second, and then. It's just, it's all about the driver. There's no, electronic aids in this car it's it's just ah oh, it's a cliche it's old school and i love old school and the more of the cars of my younger driving days these now what would be called a modern classic the more of them i drive the more i resonate with them and the more i love them and you know you often think oh maybe they won't be that nice to drive they won't be that special this thing not only is it is it pretty pokey um, even compared with a modern day car it just has so much character you know the steering's a little bit well, it doesn't really do much for the first kind of quarter turn the brakes are a bit squidgy the gearbox is is it's a 40 year old car but you forgive all of those things because you get in it and you drive it and you reminisce and you go back in time but it's not like it's old-fashioned because when I've been driving it around believe me if you're in one of these and you park up in a car park like I do as a youtuber I park up in car parks to take photographs and all those types of things literally within seconds there are people getting their cameras out coming over and wanting to know about the car it draws a crowd like like nothing else I've ever had and everybody comes over and wants to talk about the car and see the car and they've all got love and admiration for the car there's, there's not one bit of malice or hate or or anything but love and joy for this car and that for me says everything and i cannot believe it's 40 years since we first saw the audi quattro but long may it continue here's to another 40 years here's to more cars that break the mold that change the way we view things this car broke the mold before this car the only things to have four-wheel drive were land rovers and off-road vehicles nobody even thought about putting four-wheel drive in a in a family saloon car and yet now it's a fairly common practice it's a wonderful wonderful thing say a massive thank you to Audi UK um, they reached out to me for this one and I never in my wildest dreams when I started YouTube ever thought I'd get to drive a heritage car from a manufacturer's collection and here I am and it's been a very very special couple of days and I hope you've enjoyed it it's nice to look back and look at the history of such a beautiful vehicle I hope you've enjoyed this one guys if you have done so please give me a thumbs up Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys, but you take care. Drive safe.